One in 26 people will develop epilepsy at some point in their lives. The Epilepsy Foundation of Missouri and Kansas provides valuable information to those living with epilepsy as well as their families and loved ones. The diagnosis of epilepsy can be life changing. Epilepsy is the fourth most common neurological disease, more common than cerebral palsy, Parkinson's, and multiple sclerosis combined. Epilepsy is not contagious, not a mental illness, not a developmental disability. About seven in 10 people achieve seizure control with medical treatment. One out of three are not controlled by medication alone. It can occur at any age. Finding out about the Epilepsy Foundation has changed our lives. The information they provide has helped tremendously. Hi, my name is Dan, and this is my service dog here. His name is Braun, and I have one in training here. His name is Grunt. I'm a disabled Marine veteran from the Gulf War, and I have what's called TBI. TBI stands for Traumatic Brain Injury, which often causes of PNES, or Psychologic Non-Epileptic Seizures. PNES symptoms may involve uncontrolled body movements, blackouts, or other symptoms that mimic epilepsy in outward appearance, but the cause is different than it is with epilepsy. Determining the different types of seizures often takes the numerous testing treatments, which involves collaboration of different neurologists across the country. The VA 16 Epilepsy Centers of Excellence is a good source for the veterans who experience seizures related to TBI and may also have PTSD. You can also see your veteran service officer or your VA medical center to help you get help either compensation wise or medically. Please consider supporting the C's, the day roll of 5K run and walk to help those that are living with PNES or epilepsy. And thank you very much for your time and listening. My son's story with epilepsy started about 13 and a half years ago when he was first diagnosed with epilepsy one week before he turned 18. For more than 12 years, his seizures were not controlled. He went through different medications, different combinations at high dosages, and all the side effects. His seizures often lasted over three and a half minutes, and postictal stage can last for hours. He has had his front teeth knocked out. has had numerous black eyes and bruises. He had to be treated for pneumonia after aspirating during a nocturnal seizure. He has broken cabinet doors, shower doors, phones, a laptop computer, and had a seizure while holding a large kitchen knife. He had two tonic clonic seizures the morning of college finals. He also has myoclonic seizures. Myoclonic means muscle jerk. They are brief but happen in clusters, many happening close together in time and often happening after waking. He is conscious when they happen. When they are mild, he appears to be clumsy or stumbling. When they are strong, his arm jerks, and he drops what he is holding. When it affects his legs, he falls. I've seen him repeatedly fall while trying to get ready for work. As a parent, it is difficult feeling helpless as this is happening. In spite of this disease, he is never qualified for disability. Finally, in 2016, I found out about the Epilepsy Foundation and began to learn about the facts, treatment, and patient rights. I learned we are not alone. About a year ago, the Epilepsy Foundation of Missouri and Kansas helped us find an epileptologist. My son's diagnosis was juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Now, with the right treatment, our son has been nearly seizure-free. If you are living with epilepsy or have a loved one living with epilepsy, Find out all you can about it and never give up. I'm 27. I've had epilepsy for nine years and I'm one of three who have epilepsy that does not have it under control. I've battled for three years.
three years to get disability and it's still ongoing. I have been in the medical field for a long time, so I can't do what I've loved and have been doing for a while. It's hard to get hired with epilepsy. And trying to find a job is lack of transportation. If I were to find a job that accepts um, me having epilepsy and works around it, um, I might be able to pay for housing and get off of state assistance, but also a lot of that would have to go to um, taxis, things like this, because it's unsafe for us to drive. I do have a child, which I highly educated, so she knows what happens, how it happens, and what to do. If one happened, and she was the only one around. After a grand mal, there's a two to three week period following where any appointments, any school activities, or things that I really need to get done, I have to constantly write down and put everywhere. It takes a long time to try to find medications that turn your epilepsy down or hopefully to control it. You don't have seizures anymore. A lot of the medications have extreme side effects. I mean, a few errands can cause me to uh, get to a point where I feel too weak and I need to sit down and if I'm going to ask for someone's seat they're like well you look fine you know I'm gonna ask this older person if I can please have their spot so I don't fall down I can't it's it's a societal view of how people view people and what they expect of people it doesn't matter what someone looks like on the outside because we don't see the battle of what's going on inside. Hi, my son Jack is one of 55,000 Missourians living with epilepsy. Last summer, he started having some very concerning symptoms. He would be sitting in his high chair and drop his face forward. And I quickly began to be concerned, so I Googled his symptoms, as many people will tell you not to do, but I found some reliable information on the Epilepsy Foundation's website that said that he could be having a type of obson seizure. It also said to take video of the symptoms and to send them to your pediatrician. So I did that and sent it to his pediatrician. He went to Springfield to see a neurologist the very next day. She ordered a short EEG and told us that his symptoms were concerning for infantile spasms. We arrived at the hospital and did a short EEG and we, the EEG came back abnormal so we were admitted for a lengthier EEG. While we were there in that 24 hours, we researched more on the Epilepsy Foundation's website and we found more symptoms that he had had that were consistent with the diagnosis. And we were also able to find information about medications that they would soon start him on, along with the next steps that we should take for Jack's care as far as getting him an MRI to see if there was a structural abnormality that could be causing his seizures and many other things. From that point, we relied on the Epilepsy Foundation's website a lot for information about our son's disorder and for support. Uh, along the way, medication costs were astronomical and the Epilepsy Foundation sent us a lot of information about how to get his uh, medical costs under control and ways that they could help us with his care. After many EEGs and further testing, we found out that the seizures were coming from a mass on Jack's brain. Two months ago, on May 29th, we had a mass removed from his brain that was shown to be a grade one tumor. Jack spent two days in the hospital for his brain surgery and recovered 
wonderfully. He is now, we believe, to be two months seizure free. And we are now able to be advocates for the epilepsy community. And we are working very closely and very hard with the Epilepsy Foundation and Sky Granny Epilepsy and the VFW to bring education to our community, further training, so that people are aware of different types of seizures and what they look like, and how to help people through this time. This time, this time last year, we weren't even sure if Jack would live another year. We didn't know what a mass on his brain meant and what we would go through. We did know that we had the support of a community and Rala lifted us up and they carried us through the toughest time of our life. And we are so excited that Jack has made it through surgery, that he's been seizure free for two months and that we have an opportunity to host a 5K with the Epilepsy Foundation, the BFW and Sky Granny Epilepsy so that we can come out and celebrate Jack. Jack is well enough to participate in the event. He will be there, you'll get to meet him and see how wonderful he's doing. And we just want you to come out and share this wonderful moment with us.